Hey everybody, I uh, just wanted to uh, welcome you to the uh, my very first Code Assist video uh, showing, I'm going to basically show different areas of Code Assist and try to try to put a bunch of videos out on, on the net for people to use that uh, help them actually uh, use Code Assist. Code Assist being the, um, the uh, based on the PLC open standard, worldwide uh, open standard. It's probably the, wide, the most widely used version of that standard and it's a, a package that's been put together for multiple PLCs. Many companies around the world, many OEMs have uh, adopted this software and um, and uh, it's a common platform that, that you can use uh, from one to the other. Anyways, uh, this first video is just a very quick introduction just to show you how to make a just a very simple project in a couple of the areas. Of course, there's a lot of areas within Codasys that that will uh, that we'll have to discover over time. But at this point, I just wanted to show you how to make a very quick uh, project. So anyways, there's Codasys there launched and uh, running in the background. I've got it installed from the Codasys store. As you can see, uh, they talk about the Co uh, Codasys uh, latest latest news and so on. If you scroll down in here, you'll actually get um, the ability to go out to the Codasys store and you, and you can uh, get different modules and things for different companies. But if you go out to the store, codasys.com, you upload the latest build and install it. This is uh, what it looks like when it runs. From there, if I want to actually uh, create a new project, uh, I'm just going to hit the new project link. Or of course, file new project would also work either way. And I'm going to hit new project, and it's going to open up with uh, a sub window new project. Now, of course, I, I, we're going to talk about the different menus and so on. And again, the goal of this very first video is just to just show you a basic, uh, basically how to um, uh, create a, a simple project. And in our case, uh, I'm just going to select a standard project and keep it with the uh, default name untitled or I could say uh, my first, uh, first first project and say OK and it will create the project for me. Now of course uh, projects are usually associated with some kind of hardware now and in my case I actually have the module for the Raspberry Pi and, and we'll be talking about that later in another video but uh, at this point the uh, Raspberry Pi would be my selected hardware but of course if I if I pull down the device menu here there's a whole bunch of devices that it comes with and uh, and if you have your device uh, installed if you've gone and purchased the module for your device it'll show up here uh, Okay, from there, I'm going to leave it with the uh, Raspberry Pi multi-core multi version, and I'm going to select uh, Ladder Logic as my default uh, language. Of course, there's different languages within Codasys. That's one of its advantages. It follows that standard, which defines these different languages. But I'm going to stay with the Ladder Logic uh, language at this point. Say OK. Of course, these other languages, I'm going to be able to make routines uh, down the road, or POUs as they're called here in Codasys, but I'm going to be able to make those uh, later on in different languages, but the default for the initial, the initial program, the initial routine is in ladder logic. There you can see Codasys pop up. That's the way it looks, uh, just the basic project. It comes with one single routine. That's your start routine. Uh, down on the Explorer here, the Device Explorer. Of course, down on the Device Explorer on the left-hand side, it also shows you some of the hardware that would be available. Again, in my case, I selected uh, Raspberry Pi, but uh, your device would show up with its hardware. Uh, okay, from there, I'm going to double-click on the PLC program, and it will open up basically the innards of this routine. Now, of course, there's a lot of menus along the top that we're going to cover over time. Uh, but at this point, again, we're, the goal of this video is just to show you a basic basic video how to uh, start working with Codasys. So you can see what we've got here in the Codasys window. Uh, what shows up actually down below here is my uh, program window. 
my actual ladder logic window. This is where I'm going to be building my ladder logic. And up top is all my variables that are associated with, uh, with that routine. Of course, anybody that knows any structured programming language would know that most, uh, most structured languages have headers like this uh, where they define the variables to be used within that, within that routine. Okay, we're going to be able to build more routines and, and so on and so forth, but let, let's just continue. I'm getting a little far ahead of myself. I'm going to select ladder in the toolbox on the right hand side. These are all the, uh, the instruction set that are available for my ladder logic and I'm going to select contact just a basic contact dragon I'm I'm holding the left key and I'm dragging it across till I get this start here window or little box show up I'm going to drag and drop it and of course it puts down the contact I'm going to go over and do the same thing with a coil and of course you can see I I'll get this green dot here as I hover over the box uh, and uh, I'm going to place it there and it will put the coil out for me now, of course, I need addresses. And, and again, very simple project. I'm not doing anything uh, crazy here with I.O. yet. Uh, so we're not really linked up to real I.O. We're just going to use internal tags or internal variables. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to double click on the address uh, area above the contact. And I'm just going to start right there and just and just put uh, a simple, simple internal address. I'm going to call it push button one just for fun. And it opens up this declaration window, uh, sub window, where it actually allows me to select different different information regarding that that um, that variable. But in, in this case, again, I'm just doing a simple project. I'm not going to be doing covering all this extra stuff. Uh, but I I'm going to select the name and the data type. Of course, it's a boolean. A boolean being a one bit on or off as opposed to any of these other data types that, again, we'll talk about later. We're not going to initialize it on or off, and we are not certainly not linking it to a real-world address. I'm going to say OK, and that puts that address there. You'll notice up top, it actually declares it up in the header, PB1 as Boolean. See that? OK, so from there, I'm going to go and declare one for the coil as well, light1. And hitting enter will actually bring me into the auto declare window again, where I can select the uh, the, um, the variable again, the data type, initialization, and so on, and, and all of the other selections for it. But I'm going to say OK, and it's going to put that, that address in there as well. Of course, if I want to ahead of time, I could go up to the top here, and I'm actually able to type if I want to. I could type my own variables. So for example, I could hit enter and type pb2 colon space bool for boolean and semicolon and that would give me a declaration for uh, pb2. And then for example, if I wanted to do a separate contact, let's say a negated contact and use pb2 for that, that variable is already in the list. Say OK and it takes it. You should notice that it has this little ellipses button shows up. The ellipses button does show up when uh, when you go to type in an address. And of course, if you hit the ellipses button, it'll take you into the list. And, le and let's say you have a project that's quite large. It has a lot of variables. You might just want to pick from the list here from variables. You can see the your variables that are local to this routine show up. In this window okay that's again getting a little farther than we want to go at this point so that's my project all right that's just a basic project good to go let's actually test it out now there's a couple of things we can do to test it out what's interesting is in the in the codasys world we can actually codasys has a great simulator so the easiest thing to do if you just want to learn how to run codasys and use codasys you could just go and hit the simulation button down here. So that was online simulation and it goes into simulator mode. You'll notice down on the bottom here on the right hand side, it's in simulator mode now. So it's connected or it can connect, upload and download. It can send the project to the simulated PLC if you want. 
to do that, I'm just going to select online and I'm going to, in my case, I like to select login, but you could do multiple download, which will download to the PLC or to the simulated PLC. But in our case, I'm just going to hit login, which is going to try and actually connect with this simulated PLC. And it says that application sim device does not exist on device. Do you want to create it? Yes, let's create it. All right, so we create that simulated device. Now it's going to actually try and download to it, which it did. And, and as a matter of fact, it, it, it was pretty quick, but it actually even compiled or what we call compiled the code. When you compile code and every PLC does this, every software does this. When you compile code, you're changing it from your language, this visual language that we have on the computer. It, and it, it, it checks it for errors, make sure there's no, nothing wrong. And then once it's error free, it'll actually convert it to machine code. And machine code is what is actually get, what gets downloaded to this PLC, or, or in our case, our simulated PLC. You'll notice we're still in the simulator and we are actually online. You can tell that because we've got the green bars on the left here in the Explorer tree. Down at the bottom, we even have the status of of the uh, PLC. Right now, the simulated PLC is stopped and we're going to be able to turn it on into run in a second. Uh, program is loaded, program is unchanged, and we're still in the simulator mode. Let's go and run this program. If I go up to the top here, you'll notice that it, there is the start or play button. Hit start and it will it'll put the pro project in run your plc your simulated plc is in run now what's interesting is we can even go so far as it's processing its logic right now it's processing its its program right now and if we want we actually have the ability because there's nothing really writing to anything in here we have the ability to toggle some of the bits pb ones it, it's not being written to by real IO and there's nothing else in the program writing to it so I can actually toggle it if I want to toggle it I just highlight the block highlight the instruction double click it and it will set it true or if I double click it again you'll see it sets it false if I double click it again it turns off the the, the toggle or the, the setting action now that's not complete if let me do it again if I double click and hit true it's going to set a true value on PB1, but what's actually what, it's not completed yet. What you actually have to do is right click it and then go and write all values to the device. And I'm going to do that and you'll notice it actually turns on PB1 and sure enough, light one actually turns on now. It's processing the logic. Of course, I've got the knot of PB2. And again, we're going to explain this a little bit more. If you haven't seen ladder logic before, I understand that it's maybe there's some new things, but essentially it looks like relay contacts, right? When these, when in this case, it's a normally open button or normally open contact, and this is a normally closed contact. So when it's on the normally open actually simulates closing when it's when it's uh, normally closed and it's off it'll be normally closed so because of that our logic gives us a one over on our coil which could be tied to a light or a valve or a sensor or, or a device of some type and and that's basically our, our that's that's our basic project at this point if i want to go and make changes Let's say I want to go off, go back offline. I, I, I can hit stop if I want. I don't have to. The project will stay and run, but I, I'm going to hit stop. All right. And then I'm going to go offline by logging out. And it takes me back to this screen, which now shows me this, the, the, uh, the uh, compilation screen, as we call it, the error message screen. I'm going to close that. And if I want to change it, for example, maybe I want to, take out PB2. I'm going to highlight it, hit the delete key and take it out. And I'll be left with just that project, just that one rung or network. I'm going to then log in and I can log in with online changes on log in with download or log in without any change. I actually have a choice of how I want to log in because I've made a change. I want to log in with download 
and say OK, and it's going to go, actually go and download as well. Again, defining upload and download. Downloading is, is from your computer to the PLC. Uploading is from your PLC to the computer. All right, and again, it was in stop. So I'm going to hit play or start, and it's going to go into run. And if I want, I can actually hit true. I can hit false, whatever I want, and toggle that bit. That's it for now. Um, that's our initial our initial video for Codasys, just making a basic project. Thanks for listening, and please uh, uh, definitely um, uh, like the video. And uh, if I can add any more, or if you if you would like to get in touch with me, just uh, poke me over at uh, P R D E J O N G at northerndynamics.ca. So my name is Paul DeJong, and my email address again is prdejong at northerndynamics.ca. Thank you very much. Take care.